Is the Dark Knight finally ready to look behind the mask? What will he do with that revelation? Well, let's hop into the pages of Batman the Detective issue number 5, the penultimate issue of this Tom Taylor series, and find out together, shall we? So then, picking up from where the last issue left off, Batman had finally gotten the keys to his massive mobile Batcave. It's a double-decker because, well, this is Europe, don't you know? After multiple issues of struggling to try and uncover who exactly the mysterious Equilibrium is and what her plans are, Batman figured now was a good a time as any to call in some favors with the International Club of Heroes, but not just them, also every head of state international cop that Batman ever held. Yes, it would seem that Batman is owed favors all over the world by all sorts of people in law enforcement. No one tell Jim Gordon, though, he might get a little bit jealous. It's with their help running facial recognition all over the world, they managed to find out that Equilibrium has set up shop in Belgium. In fact, they're hosting a big fancy soiree party tonight. The guests, if you already don't know, are all different people that Batman has saved over the years. Equilibrium plans to make a big show at executing them, and as they put it, balancing the scales. Batman ends up crashing the party, and when I say that, I don't mean his acute turn of phrase. I mean, he quite literally takes his double-decker mobile Batcave and crashes it through a priceless Belgian landmark. Ah, you know, he's rich. I'm sure he can pay to have it fixed, right? If they can rebuild Notre Dame, they can rebuild this place, too. Batman heroically throws himself into the fray, quite literally dancing between the bullets to try and buy Knight and Squire enough time to rescue all the captured people. It's here too, Batman finally gets a chance to have a more even-footed fight against the leader of Equilibrium, and he has to admit she's really good using all sorts of different tactics that he himself has utilized over his career. And if you think this newest nugget of information is going to be helpful in cracking the case of Equilibrium's true identity, well then you're totally right, but more on that in a minute. Once all the civilians are clear, Batman acts activates a bunch of tear gas to blind all of Equilibrium's foot soldiers. She manages to escape herself because she's just that good, but it seems that the back of the organization has been broken. Of course, none of this still answers the question, who the hell is she and why the hell is she so mad at Batman? Well, for those answers, it seems that Bruce Knight and Squire are going to have to get some more help from Henry Ducard, who is very much not dead. He's just in a lot of pain after suffering three gunshot wounds. He tells Bruce that he needs to come and meet him at the place that they first met. And so back to Paris we go. And now here finally Henry Ducard finally feels comfortable enough to reveal everything about the secret leader of Equilibrium. And hey, if you've been listening to all my past videos, you'll be happy to know I was 100% right in guessing the conclusion of this story before it actually happened. So here's the long and short of it. Equilibrium's real name is Charlotte and she too, like Bruce, was trained by Henry Ducard. In fact, Ducard got closer to her than just about anyone else thinking her as a daughter. However, unlike Bruce, Bruce Charlotte had absolutely zero bones about killing people, and because of that, she became a highly sought-after asset by some of the most powerful and clandestine spy groups in the world. Charlotte would eventually leave that life of subterfuge, blood, and violence behind when she got married and had a child. Granted, none of this quite explains why she's mad at Batman yet. For that, though, we have to go back in time once more to the day before Batman dealt with that bomb crisis in London. You see, Batman, the original Knight and Squire had come together to try and take down an arms smuggling ring. With their backs against the walls and not wanting to go quietly, the smugglers decided to blow up their cache of weapons. Batman swooped on in to save the head smuggler, but he also ended up saving a completely unrelated accountant who just so happened to work in the same building. Flash forward many years and that accountant ends up driving drunk and T-boning Charlotte's car, killing her husband and son. This tragedy would end up absolutely shattering Charlotte, who was never able to give up control of this situation and figured that if fate had to kill her family, then surely someone must be to blame, and that person is Batman. But Charlotte's not just stopping here. The grunts of Equilibrium may have been taken care of, but her biggest attack is still yet to come. You'll recall that Batman had saved all of London from a bombing? Well then, that means to balance the scale, Charlotte is going to end up destroying an entire city that Batman had saved previously as the comic comes to a close. And so that was Batman the Detective issue number five everybody, and you know what, I'm not gonna dance around it, I'm gonna come right out and say it, I was quite disappointed with this penultimate issue. For a book that proudly calls itself The Detective, the actual mystery at work here could not have been easier to solve, in fact, I solved it basically by issue two. Now again, just because a mystery is easy to unravel doesn't mean the story is bad, and there's still one issue left, so maybe there will be an 11th hour twist. And I certainly hope there is, because I'm not gonna lie, this whole Charlotte thing here feels very trite and very cliche 
way in like a million other Batman stories we've seen before. Which is a shame because we know Tom Taylor as a writer is capable of oh so much more. Overall, I think I can only give this one a 6 out of 10. I was kind of disappointed. Hey there everyone, Cape Jewel again, and I want to thank you so much for watching to the end of the video. As always, if you liked what you see, be sure to like, subscribe, comment. It really helps drive engagement and helps me out too. Also, if you are a patron, which you can become for as little as a dollar a month, you will get exclusive content that no one else can ever see, and you'll get to see the Comic Multiverse podcast before anyone else too. You can check out all this and more down in the description. And until next time everyone, this has been Cape Jewel, and I'll see you all next time. Cheers.